Okay, so I am here with Stuart Beale, um, and we're going to have a bit of a chat today about careers, um, mostly for our students that are in the IT and computing sector. Obviously, there may be some things that come up that are relevant and interesting to people in other sections as well. Um, but what we'll have a quick talk is about sort of um, what Stuart does, how he got into his career, and you know, his path that he's taken, and we'll hopefully get some good sort of bits of tips and advice for you all there. So just to start off, nice easy one, Stuart, can you tell me what your job role is and how you fit it to the organisation that you work at? Yeah, hello everybody. Um, so uh, my, my job role and, and job title is um, a service desk manager. Um, I, I'm working for Leicestershire County Council um, and really I head up the, um, the, the, the support function of IT at the council. So myself and my team members uh, provide support to uh, council employees um, and with regards to any of their IT needs, their IT faults or incidents that they have, or, or, or indeed um, new equipment or new software that they might need. Okay, interesting. And can you tell us sort of a little bit more about what the organisation does as a whole and kind of how your team fits into that structure? Yeah, so Leicestershire County Council um, uh, is um, a, a, a regional authority and, and it provides services to um, the, the, the members of the public within uh, the Leicestershire County Council, uh, Council um, area, uh, in yeah. the county area. Um, and the, the council is, is divided up into a number of departments uh, and these departments specialize in, in certain areas. So for instance, there is a department that, that specialize in adult um, services and adult social services, one for children's. We also, also have departments that um, are looking after environment and transport, things like potholes and roads and trees. Um, um, and obviously things like public health, uh, which uh, obviously our public health department at the moment is, is very, very busy with, with the COVID related things that are going on. Yeah, yeah. And each of these departments, um, let's face it, everything runs on IT nowadays. So every single person in the employment of, of the county council will have a need for some kind of IT at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's our job on, on the support desk and the service desk to, to provide um, help with any faults or, or issues that they might have and, you know, just generally providing them with the, the IT that, that our departments need for them to provide the services to our uh, members of the public. Great. OK, so just to go back a little bit then in terms of sort of your, your personal you know, view on it, can you tell us a little bit about your sort of journey to where you are now and your job that you've got in terms of maybe sort of past roles you've had or your education and things like that? Um, yeah, um, for 17 years, I was in the army. Um, I was a corporal in the army and um, going off and doing all sorts of wonderful and weird things um, in, in that environment. Um, but um, I wanted to do something different. Um, I had a hobby and an interest in uh, IT. I'm a big, big gamer, um, or certainly was a big gamer, not so much now. Yeah. Um, so I decided once I come out of the army, I'm going to uh, retrain uh, in IT because it's something I, I love. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I kind of uh, retrained, I took a training course, an intensive training course um, in IT. Uh, and from there, I um, got a job um, as a project engineer. Uh, and basically, that was um, going around um, retail sites around the country, um, installing um, um, tilling systems and, and, um, EPOS systems and back office servers and stuff like that uh, as a project engineer. After a while of doing that, um, I, because of my experiences in the army, um, I, I, um, I found it easy to uh, become a team leader and I, I led a team of project engineers. And then really it was just um, as the opportunities arose um, for uh, new jobs or, or jobs in different areas, or more interesting jobs, I, I then just moved sort of through the team leader roles into management and, and ended up where I am today. 
Brilliant. Okay. So it's interesting to hear your path there. And what we find often with guests that have on to discuss this sort of thing is what becomes kind of clear over time is that, you know, the number of different routes you can take to get to a job like yours. So obviously speak to some people that sort of go the college university route, some people that have been in the army and things like that in the past, people that have gone down one career path and then retrained and gone completely in a different direction. So a good message for the students there about, you know, there's not one set path to doing things. You might, you might have a plan that is I go to school, I go to college, I go to uni, then I just go into this job. So it's good to hear again, you know, a different and a, another very background story there. So, I mean, what another thing I wanted to touch on, and I suspect like a lot of people ask at the moment, there might not be a sort of straightforward answer to this question, but I mean, especially with everything that's going on with COVID at the moment, could you talk us through a little bit about what a typical day might look for you, if there is one in, indeed? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think typical days in, in IT have, have, have passed us with, with the introduction of, of COVID. Yeah. Um, um, before I get into like a typical day, I think it's worth just talking about um, what coronavirus, uh, ha what effect, other than the health effects, what effect has that, that had on businesses? Sure. And overnight, um, we, the, the council effectively moved 5,000 employees from sitting in an office um, in a business environment um, in perhaps a, a county hall or in, in one of our locations overnight 5,000 staff are working from home yeah. and the IT requirements and the IT needs are very very different uh, for somebody working in an office uh, to somebody working in a in mm -hmm. home so our whole lives our whole IT lives have, have effectively changed uh, you know with with um, the where you know where, where COVID has has affected us um, but I suppose a typical day for me um, I act as a as a liaison in some respects between our business units, the mm -hmm. adults department, the, the children's department, the the um, educate uh, the education departments and and environment departments. So I I work as that liaison. So a typical day for me will be just ensuring and checking in with department heads and and team leaders of these frontline services what we term as a frontline service yeah, yeah. and ensuring that their IT is is still doing what it needs to do um, uh, for that group of, of employees so quite a lot of my uh, daily routine is liaising with um, department heads feeding that back into the IT management structure that we have, allowing the, the IT management structure to absorb that information and possibly putting in any changes uh, that's required. On an individual basis, I'm, I'm looking after a team of, of 14 um, staff. And so um, I, I have to ensure that my staff are happy and, and that they've got everything they need to do their job. Um, I'm also then liaising with IT sections and departments. So we might have a, an IT section that is looking after applications, or we might have a, a team that is, is looking after servers, uh, and just ensuring that all of those different parts and components of IT are working together um, and are effectively providing the level of service that our our customers, the, the council employees, uh, demand and deserve. Okay, yeah, that's really interesting. And as you say, I mean, obviously, it's something that as an organisation, the College of Experience themselves, it's interesting to see about this, you know, obviously, for years, some companies have been looking to try and migrate to, you know, having remote working and the distributed workforce or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I think there have been some concerns about, you know, what that would, under, you know, what undertakings would need to happen for that to happen and how it would impact you know, things like uh, productivity, and then just out of, you know, necessity, people have had to sort of do that overnight and run that experiment and see how it's turned out, obviously, under quite time pressured circumstances as well. So it's interesting to hear your insight there. And, and you know, some from somebody sort of right in the, in the you know, in the weeds of doing that, that, you know, sort of the, uh, the, the nitty gritty and the difficulties of doing that and actually managing to overcome it. So that's something that's interesting. And as I say, that's why often when we speak to people in your profession that there isn't really an answer to a typical day because it's probably more ever changing than it ever was before. So, I mean, yeah. just in terms then of, you know, actually um, a lot of our students in the next year or two are going to be looking to go into the world of work and looking at their first sort of opportunities for employment as they come out of college. Is there anything you would say that you've picked up in your career so far that would be um, worth passing on in terms of tips or advice or do's and don'ts, things to avoid perhaps as well? Um, yes, certainly. Um, 
I think one of the the the, the key things, uh, the key messages that I'd like to get across. Um, I I left school with very little um, in, by by way of qualification. I, I was not a high achiever at school. Um, and if the truth be known, I drifted my school days away, looking out the window, wishing I was somewhere else. Um, but I don't think that. I think I think what I'm I'm I'm, I'm really trying to explain is um, don't feel that you've missed an opportunity if a particular qualification passes you by, or you or you've not got exactly what you you feel you need to progress into uh, an employment don't feel as if that is the end of it mm -hmm. i've um, studied at open university i have um, studied at degree level courses um, but more importantly i think i've i've put an effort into learning some practical skills so i've done some microsoft um, exams i've done some cisco exams um, yeah. Some of this has been funded by where I work. Some of this I've done off, off my own back. But I think really a, a key message would be if you feel that you've missed an opportunity with a, with a qualification, mm -hmm. it is not the end of, of the road. There are always things that are open to you, uh, you know, in the future. And, and careers go in different directions. So it, it's, it's good to have... Uh, an idea of a direction that you want to go it may well be for instance if it's within it it may well be coding or or it may well be um security um or um hardware or, or servers and that's a, a, a an excellent aim to start off with but you'll often find that once you've done two or three years in a particular area another interest will come up and don't be afraid of moving um, disciplines within IT or in any in any job that you go to. Um, don't feel that you are pigeonholed because you've got a particular qualification. All the qualification does is open doors elsewhere. Okay, and that's really interesting. I mean, we've had some very similar um, answers from people that do sort of similar roles to yourself in completely different organisations. So it's good to see that come up as a common theme. And I think a great lesson for the students, as you say, is do you know just because you feel like you've got a you know a very narrow plan or window that you're aiming for, um, it doesn't mean that other opportunities won't come up elsewhere. And as you say, it's good to sort of have an open mind, isn't it, about you know the avenue you might go down. You know, some people may find that they sort of follow their steps A, B, C to get to D, and that's exactly the way it goes. But for the majority. Of people I think they'll find that's probably not the case so as you say don't get disillusioned if things don't go exactly as you you expect that they might in terms of stepping stone so I think that's good to hear um I mean sort of in terms of um you know in terms of doing your job day to day and possibly the way you think about it outside of you actually do it at the organization is there anything that you think that you would recommend the students to keep on top of in terms of say blogs or websites podcasts and you know sometimes people recommend youtube channels that are worth looking at in terms of and um, just keeping up with you know industry stranded knowledge is there anything like that you would recommend to students yeah I, I think at the moment there are two areas that i would certainly keep an keep an eye on um neither of these two are, are particularly new but they are starting to, to change uh, and to um reinforce the, the the direction that it is taking so anything that anything to do with cloud so SaaS solutions um infra, infrastructure as a solution anything that is related to cloud mm -hmm. keep a keep a good eye on the direction that that technology is taking okay. um the, I, I suspect that a lot of companies in the future will have a, a, a hybrid system. They will have bits of traditional IT computing that is on site mm -hmm. at, at, at an office. But I think a lot of it will, will, will be moving, if not already moved, to the cloud. So watch for, for cloud um, developments. And I think the other area as well um, is Microsoft. Um, Microsoft has been around for, for a long, long time. It's had one or two not so serious challenges. I think the biggest challenge really has come from, from Apple. Um, but I would, I would expect Microsoft to start changing some of their infrastructure and some of their 
core components um you know so for instance we've seen teams uh delivered uh, over the last few years we're seeing changes to skype and telephony within microsoft we'll see collaboration spaces develop within microsoft so anything that anything new is coming out of microsoft i would i would certainly be keeping an eye on Okay, that's really interesting. And I mean, just on that, um, is there anything that you think that is kind of coming over the hill that you might be aware of as somebody that's, that's um, you know, in industry that students might not be aware of that you see as a sort of game changer that's coming along that they may not have considered at all? Ooh, um, I think you put me on the spot there. <laughs> um, I, yes, uh, and again, in some respects, this is, this is, not necessarily coming over the hill it is kind of with us um but telephony um and, and the way that business telephony works um will, will certainly be be changing in, in the future um you know if um we continue working from home i've been working from home for six months i've been into the office once in that six months um and working from home is 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 starting to bring up challenges in communication so it wouldn't surprise me if collaboration um, spaces telephony technologies start to, to change to to accommodate uh, working from home and working remotely right great okay yeah i mean that's again something that that comes up and i think sometimes maybe for students it might seem obvious to think that well you know okay that's happening at the moment and hopefully that you know maybe that goes back to normal you know so to speak in the next couple of years as things you know get a bit more back to the way they were you know pre-covid but i think you know similar to what you say there i imagine that a lot of this will be with us for some time now because now that you know some companies and employers have made this shift they've seen what's possible and there'll be a bit more of a, a pull in that direction possibly anyway so i think in terms of the working from home and you know collaborative tools as you say teams and, and zoom and things like that we're using now i think it's definitely worth keeping on top of and and assuming that's going to be here for you know quite some time now isn't it so i think that's something good for for students to keep on top of and uh, you know a lot of people watching this in terms of the students they are doing some of their um you know they're taking some of their classes from home they have some of their sessions with tutors from home as well so it's something to you know to bear in mind that even when you're actually learning you are actually using and a lot of the technology you're going to continue to for quite some time so it's something to be aware of that you you know you're using it all of the time but don't take that part of it for granted and absolutely and uh, and i guess uh, um, another area that is um perhaps um out of the ordinary for for me and possibly my generation um is is the the the, the mix of the the, the mix of working at home or working and your home life in, in yeah. some respects i suppose that's the better way of, of, of describing it from a from a traditional point of view i uh, and my generation will have a, a very clear cut off we will have gone to work um, we will work eight hours and we come home and our time is our own i think now um th there is a, a bigger bigger mix and, and so getting a a, a, a work home life balance mm. um, is going to be important for, for the next couple of generations that come along mm. because the, the two are going to merge you know i i work outside of my normal working hours um, to ensure that things like patching is done and updates are done to servers and systems um and you know quite often i will take a break during my 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 working day um to take the rubbish out or to take delivery of a, of a parcel um that, that i've uh, impulse bought on amazon <laughs> or you know so work home life balance is is something that uh, i think is something that you need to to bear in mind for the future yeah, definitely good advice. I mean, that's something I think a lot of the staff at the college have picked up themselves is, as you say, there's a lot more flexibility now and then scope to kind of, you know, mold life in your working hours a little bit around your own, you know, your own time. But also, as you say, keeping that balance and making sure that at some point you kind of cut it off. I know for me at the end of the day, you know, when I finished, the laptop goes in the drawer and I don't look at it again until the next morning. But that's something we're all going to have to learn on the fly, isn't it? Yeah, so I think some, you know, some great stuff in there, some great advice and tips, definitely some uh, good lessons to think about, you know, for students, especially as we move forward into, you know, with, with this sort of technology. Um, and what may well, may well happen as a result of this, you know, I know students will watch these videos and they may well come up with, you know, sort of follow-up questions or things like that that they would like to ask you specifically. So I may come back to you at some point further down the line with some questions from students, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy for that. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, Stuart. I know you're a very busy man, so I'll leave you to it. But, uh, but yeah, thank you on behalf of the students. Thank you. Cheers.